it's the Biddy TV show and I am so glad you're with us today because we got something hot and I don't want you to miss it so listen I'm April Marcel your host and we'll be right back today on Biddy TV we have Trip Azure and Rona Bennett Today we have an artist that we're going to showcase. He is totally amazing. Everyone, I present to you Trip Azure. Sad boy, why you look so sad? Sad, sad, sad boy. Sad boy. Sad boy. Why you look so sad? Did she break your to have you here on the Biddy TV show. Welcome. Thank listen, you. It's my pleasure to be here. It's been a long time since I've seen you here in the 757 and you were gorgeous then, but you are more gorgeous now. <laughs> You're just being kind to me. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's all true. All true. So listen, what are you doing now? I have been 
kind of on hiatus with a lot of the music industry in particular. Uh, you know that the pandemic really kind of shut us down for a little bit. And so we've all been either reinventing ourselves or doing some healing that we haven't you know, done. Or, you know, I, I didn't realize how much I would appreciate this break. Um, I needed to do some healing myself. And then once I came out of kind of my cocoon, I got my mojo back. And I've been working on my school. I'm a personal power coach <clears throat> for Personal Power University. I just completed our annual retreat that we do every year where the students from all over, because it's a global school. So they'll come in to one particular location and we get to have a weekend of transformation and fun and elevation. But this year, because of the pandemic, we had to do it virtually. And we were blown away at how amazing everything came out. So much so that it was up there with some of our, our top retreats as far as connection, transformation, breakthrough. So that's been really rewarding. Um, you know, in both, we're still celebrating our 30th anniversary oh, for the brand. Congratulations. So we've been doing, yeah, thank you. We've just been kind of doing some things with that. Um, I'm focusing on books. I'm focusing on the next move for my coaching. So I've just been kind of having a good time reinventing and exploring what's next. Yes, yes, because this has been a new normal for us. It's like, I mean, what's next? <laughs> what do we <laughs> expect? <laughs> you said something about um, a show you were doing? Well, actually, I don't even know if I brought that up, but I did create something. I exec executive produced a show called Emerge. It was a web broadcast that I did with an old buddy of mine, a Mouseketeer buddy. Um, he and I produced a show that helped us to figure out how we're going to emerge from the pandemic. So I had some dynamic guests on the show. Mark Victor Hansen, who's the co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, his wife, okay. um, Dr. James Bentley. Yeah, lots of really cool people. Harvard professors came out to talk about, you know, um, systemic racism and what we can do to change the climate of what we're facing right now. Um, that was a very powerful thing to produce during the pandemic as well. We have more things on the horizon with that. And just um, staying creative. Yes. And we all have to be creative, those that are artists. And, and I want to get um, into that a little more because I know that you are in music and you're doing very well. And for an artist that is trying, and, and I mean, like I said, this is the new normal. So it's not like it used to be. So we have to sort of reinvent ourselves. So for someone who is trying to break into the music industry, um, what would be your take on that, especially during this pandemic? And I know that there are so many platforms um, now, basically anyone can have that experience of being in music because there's CD Baby, there's YouTube, there's social media. There's so many platforms that they can put their music on um, into. You're on a different level of um, music, of the entertainment world. And if they had a desire to get to that level, what would you, um, what kind of points would you give them? You know, it's interesting. I think you're already on to it, right? Um, <clears throat> because of how we have evolved digitally, AI, artificial intelligence, right? The avenue for how you can enter the game has expanded. So there's, I find that there's no one right way to do it. It just depends on how you're built, uh, what kind of drive you have, um, how much work you're willing to put in, uh, possibly who you reach out to for help. I, I think that we have to be reminded of the old school in the sense that most things that were earned and that have been cultivated and that have become even greater and have, I, I think that we have to be reminded of the old school in the sense that most things that were earned and that have been cultivated and that have become even greater and have had sustainability, they come from persistence, they come from focus. And so much of that is getting fragmented, I find, from like social yes. media. You know, a lot of people are having a hard time following two on things, which I think is a superpower at this point for sure. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, definitely take advantage of those platforms like YouTube. Build your audience, you know, yes. be consistent about it. Um, if right. you have messaging, are you clear with your messaging? You know, what kind of yes. artist are you? What, what kind of message are you putting across and, and can people put a finger on it? You know, is it something that we can see and understand and, and it's feelable, you know? Um, utilize your Instagram, utilize, you know, 
uh, the streaming services, Spotify, yes. you know, yes. Apple Music. I mean, there's just so much that you yes. can have access to. Back in the day, we used to have writing camps. They're not really as popular, you know, as prevalent because mm -hmm. things are so boutique. You know, you get something from over here, you can do something from over there. So I think it really also comes down to how creative you're willing to yes. be. And, and, and just how ten, ten, tenacious, because there are people who read up to me all the time in my box, and they have a different way that they're presenting their products, or a way that they're exchanging one thing for another, you know, um, how they can contribute to your movement, so that in turn, you might mentor and contribute to theirs. I have a wonderful relationship with a student who came on board, and I'm watching him score right now with his film and mm -hmm. entertainment, um, mm -hmm. you know, direction. So it just really depends on who you are, how tenacious you are, how persistent you are, how, how much you're willing to persevere, and then keep tweaking and honing your craft. And since we're talking about entertainment, I would like to know what um, made you decide to um, pursue your career in entertainment? You know, I always say that I think I, I felt like I got lucky early on because mm -hmm. when I was a kid, I knew what I wanted to be pretty quickly. When I was like seven or eight, I would always be in my parents' basement, you know, where someone else was the walls, the wood panel walls that covered the insulation because I'm from Chicago, right? Oh. So somebody else might see a wall, but I'm looking through the wall into the sea of adoring people in this theater who want to see me perform, <laughs> you know? And I'm living there constantly. And then I go down to my grandma's house and I'm putting the foster kids and my cousins together for a talent show. And, yes. you know, then I came back home and my mom realized that I was serious and she put me in church and then she put me in a local theater and then we just mm -hmm. kind of asked our way to success because my parents yes. you know they're not in fine arts at all they just my mom worked for the government my dad was a construction mm -hmm. worker they had no clue how to put a kid into the entertainment industry so we just mm -hmm. asked our way to success Who, who's the man next to the man that knows where mm -hmm. we go and got involved in community stuff and just stay persistent do you mind if we show a piece of your work? No, ma'am. Be my guest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go, everyone. Rona Bennett.
little piece of uh, your work, um, your song, Don't Let Go. Beautiful song. And I know you to be an actress as well. So how did you get into um, acting? I remember my first role was about 11 years old. I was a background singer. And I saw the kids in front of me doing this acting thing. And I'm like, I want to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so my mom went to the director after that play concluded and said, you know, is there any way you want to play some kind of role? And eventually he let me understudy the lead for the next play. And it just so happened that the young lady who was supposed to be ready for the lead was not ready. And I ended up going up for the opening night and I stayed in that position. And that just mm -hmm. kind of helped me, you know, my career to take off. And I remember one night a talent scout came to the theater and um, they told me to come down and meet this agent and that's kind of how everything took off. What are the pros and cons? That's a good because question. Because everything is not going to be a bed of roses. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I remember when in my mid-30s, I hit what I call my proverbial wall. And when the industry was, had really turned over and we were all, I don't know if you remember this, but when, you know, um, people were falling off like flies, things were consolidating, yes, the record companies were right. And so people were trying to figure it out. And um, I was along with those people. And I remember at the time I had been with Involve and uh, I was kind of on cruise control, thinking I wasn't doing what I used to do to make myself successful. Planting seeds, you know, what am I, what do I want? What are my dreams? And then watering them with my focus and then taking action on those things and, and continuing to, to manifest things, to co-create because God gives us free will. Yes. Uh, I wasn't doing that. I just got a little complacent, lazy, and fell off. And then, <laughs> you know, had a shift because the original members wanted to come back together. And, you know, I took a, another hiatus. And during that hiatus, I realized how I had not nurtured sorry, uh, network. You know, like, you know how they say your network is your net worth. I had not been nurturing relationships. Mm -hmm. um, I had not been you know, like I said, meditating or visualizing, using my imagination to create the next frontier, thinking about it, taking action towards it. And so I literally had to go back to the drawing board and remember what got me there. And then remember that we are deliberately creating out here. So you can't just wait for life to happen to you. We got to happen to life. Or at least, you know, that's how I think. So right. I think that that's, that's the main thing is staying focused, remembering that you are out here co-creating this yes. thing. You're choosing your way to the destiny that you could have. And so you want to stay vigilant of that, if, if I could suggest that. And also, um, you know, using your discernment. You know, there are a lot of people who could not have your best interest at heart. That's so um, true. And, right? And so you want to be paying attention to what, what's your value system. Yes. And if you do know your value system very clearly, you can measure those people and things to it. And you can say, hmm, this does not match my value system. I need to deprioritize this. Or you know what? This actually does match my value system. And I need to prioritize this in my life. You know? Yes. So being self-aware is, is a very powerful and I think necessary thing to do in this business. Um, mm -hmm. Learning your business, right? Because it's a music yes. business. It's not just music. So you want to know how to read a contract. Um, even if you don't understand all the lingo, still read it. That's how I, I learned. You know, I was like, I don't know what this is. It's double speak and legalese, but I at least had a, a lawyer who was like, well, if you don't understand something, just come back and ask me. A lot of people don't even read it, you know? Mm -hmm. But once I started to read my contracts and ask her things, I could kind of piece things together in the future. Mm -hmm. And then I got better and better because I would expose myself to the language. Learn your business, right? Don't forget to develop your interpersonal skills because it's not just about talent. Yes. We all know somebody that's like more talented than us. You know, they that's got so true. So, right. So it's it's about relationships. It's, it's about learning how to nurture them. It's about learning how to sustain and maintain them. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's about your drive and tenacity and your focus and your and your intuitiveness and you know all of those yes. things. Because I think Will Smith talks about how um, you know yeah they may be more talented than me, but they're not going to outwork me. I love that. You know, there's <laughs> so, it, so that. many different components that yes, can make you yes, successful. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. And you have given so many great tips and encouragement. 
And, you know, I would say um, to people, be sure that this is what you want to do. If, if Be sure that this is your call. This is your purpose. This is what you're supposed to do before you go jumping out there doing something that you're really not supposed to be doing. I've seen that a lot. I've seen a lot of people just jump the gun um, because they've seen somebody else do it and they feel like they can do it and it looked good, it looked easy, but when they mm -hmm. got out there, it was a totally right. different story. But for those who are called to do this, everything mm -hmm. that you have said, you've given so much, so much to someone who is supposed to be doing whatever it is, the entertainment, whether it be acting or whatever, um, study your craft, you know, Woo! if you have to go back yeah. and rewind and, and remember it and put it in your being, and again, I love I loved it when you said something about discernment, because yeah. you know I'm, I'm you know I'm not on the same level as you are, um, Rona, but I've been doing yeah. this for a long time. I've been doing um, yes, ma'am, for a long time. And so you learn you sometimes you have to learn the hard way, and I hate for someone yeah. to have to learn that way. But always, if if something is telling you that something ain't right. It probably is. <laughs> so um, take care of yourself and watch out for, you know, watch out um, with who you're, you're working with. I'll put it that way. Because some things can really hurt you. So I'm glad you brought that out. But Rona, um, what, what do you have coming up? You know, I am also a mouseteer, or used to be. And so uh, several of us yes. are reunited. Yeah, right now. And we're going to do a Christmas album. So that's going to be coming out this year. It's a collection of classics. Uh, and we just kind of, our team, our, you know, some of our mouthpieces are executive producing it. And they're like, let's do this. And we're like, yeah, let's do this. And so it just came together in like a month, right? Wow. So we have this beautiful, eclectic blend of these original takes on classics in uh, Christmas oh. music. And that's going to be out this year. So I'm so excited about that. <laughs> oh, I am too. And I, I want to get that. <laughs> And I'm going to get some more of your music as well. Yes. And I want, to, um, I want you to tell everyone, how can they find you? How can they get um, purchase some of your work? And for someone who just wants to plant a seed, a blessing, a financial blessing into your ministry, because I think it's a ministry, um, how can they do Thank that? You. Oh, I appreciate you. You know what? I, I, <laughs> I need to put this together, a donation button or something like that. Yes. Um, you know, why? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Come visit me at RonaBennett.com for anything that you need. Send me a private message uh, on one of my okay. social media platforms. If, if God gave it to you, go for it. I feel like this, yes, we have been through a pandemic, <laughs> and it has been some mm -hmm. kind of year. Yes. But it is still the time to use your gift, whatever he gave you, Hello. whatever God gave you, use it. This is your time. I believe that. This beautiful young lady has given us something that is priceless. She has given us good direction on what to do to um, break into the music industry or whatever you have a desire to do. Do the work, study, okay? Be on top of it. And Miss Rona, we thank you so much for being on the show. We hope um, that you will come back you know, listen, we are new at this. We're pushing our way, but we are expecting great things. And we are honored that um, you um, decided to be with us on today. And thank you so much. It's my pleasure. So good to see your beautiful face. I love to see you out here grinding the pavement, pouring into somebody else's life yet again. All right. Peace. Thank you. Peace. I'm so glad that you sat with us today here at Biddy TV. And I just appreciate Miss Rona Bennett so much because she gave so many good things, so many good tips for you to make it as an artist. So if you can't remember everything she said, I encourage you to rewind the tape, <laughs> rewind the video and go back and get it because it is so important um, for you to be successful um, in your endeavors, okay? Study your craft, study your craft, and go for it. Push forward, it's not gonna be a bed of roses. You're gonna have the ups and the downs, but don't give up. Be consistent, she said, 
and I'm here to tell you that you can do it. And listen, remember this one thing. I love you. Peace.